So here's a picture of a crater shadow. Let me let it load here. So we've got the um, wall of the crater and the sun is coming in at some angle from the horizon, right? And as it strikes the rim of the crater, the rim casts a shadow into the, um, the crater floor. So we can figure out some things about the crater based on the shadows. So if we think about the um, crater rims and then the floor of the crater, and then let's just draw this circle as if we're looking down from above. So this is the crater floor as seen from above. Then imagine we have the sun, uh, it's at some angle above the horizon and it's you know shining onto the crater. Well, you can draw a line from the rim of, uh, to the center of the sun and wherever that line intersects the uh, floor of the crater, that's gonna be the shadowed region. So that region is not gonna be receiving sunlight. So that would be the region of crater shadow. So how much of the um, floor is shadowed depends on that angle of the sun. So if you have a, you know, a lower solar altitude, then you're going to have a larger shadow overall. So you can imagine that if the moon's orbit is relatively close to the Earth's orbit, about five degrees off, um, it's going to also have permanent shadows in certain latitudes. I don't have a question prepared for this, but I guess just um, you can type just in the chat quickly. Do you think this would be more likely at kind of mid latitudes near the moon's equator or near the moon's poles to be in permanent shadow? Yep, exactly. So near the moon's poles, the sun's altitude is going to be lower for more of, I would say year, but it doesn't really matter because the moon doesn't have a huge axial tilt, um, but for more of the month. Okay, awesome. So yes, we would expect maybe to find more frozen water in the permanently shadowed craters near the poles. Okay, um, another variable that impacts the shadows is how deep or shallow the crater is. So if the crater is relatively shallow, then um, the shadow will cover less of the floor, but if the uh, crater is relatively deep, then the shadow will cover more of it. So all of this geometry can be used to figure out the size of a crater and the depth of a crater if you know the other variable. So, you know, typically it would be easy to measure the size of a crater, right? We can do that because we have objects in orbit around the moon, or even if you had a good telescope, you could figure out how big it is compared to the whole diameter of the moon. And then if you knew how much of the crater was shadowed at a given um, latitude and time of day, then, and you knew the solar altitude, then you can figure out the depth of the crater. So let me show you how that works. Um, if we can measure the length of the shadow by taking a picture, for example, we can calculate the depth, but we need to know also the angle of the sun. So essentially all we're doing here is creating a right triangle and using a little bit of trigonometry to calculate the depth of the crater. So um, I think this is really cool because I love math and love when it can calculate fun things. Um, we're not gonna do anything with this, but I just wanted to show you how that works. Okay. Um, okay, recall question about the solar angle. What is that angle above the horizon called? Okay, I now see most votes for altitude. This is good. Yes, so the sun's altitude is the angle above the horizon. And we talked about this in the homework, so you may want to expect it on the quiz. Make sure that you remember the difference between these different angle measurements. The zenith is the angle from vertical. So zenith angle is the angle of the sun from the observer's zenith, and altitude is the angle from the observer's horizon. Um, declination and latitude, these are, remember, two different things as well. They don't have to do with the location of the sun. Latitude is our location from Earth's equator measured toward the north or south. And then declination is that same sort of angle, but on the celestial sphere instead, measured from the celestial equator. 
why would we care about using math to measure the depth of a crater if we can just put something in orbit around the moon and have it measure with lasers the altitude of the surface? Well, um, if you were an astronomer before the time of space exploration, this is the only thing you would have had to go on, would be images of the moon taken with telescopes, and then your knowledge of the sun and moon's relative position so that you could figure out this altitude angle. So if you wanted to know anything about which of those craters was deepest and try to make a map of the moon, this is the sort of thing you'd be having to do.